Good morning, guys. It's me, Mila Kachin. I'm back uh, after some break. Anyway, we will continue today our lectures regarding our Schliemann gambit, uh, Schliemann variation, and um, after first introduction and a couple more games, uh, I'm going to get back to my own experience. And today's game I presented to you, it's a game from um, very much last uh, American Open from 2011. I played against uh, Jack Peters uh, with black pieces. And um, I have some history against uh, Jack because we've been playing, I've been playing against him um, as a black side in Schlemming Gambit for three times already. And every time when we played the game, Jack tried to surprise me uh, with some new weapon. And this time, he prepared against me uh, one of the main lines. Not C3. In fact, the very first time uh, when I played Jack, I think it was uh, probably about like eight years ago, he also tried not C3. Then he changed his uh, line, he played something else, and now he had to get back to his uh, primary weapon. So I was curious what Jack actually prepared at this time. And very quickly, we have reached one of the most uh, very well-known positions in this line. And here comes Kaboom, uh, which again, as I told you, I haven't expected. Here Jack took on F6. Um, I was trying to recall, you know, my old analysis. In fact, uh, in all my chess career, I have never met this move in real life. I mean, I've been playing against this move uh, in the Blitz games uh, most of the times on ICC, but never be playing this line in real as I said. So I was trying to recall uh, my analysis. What, what do I do? I knew uh, for a fact I must take here for sure uh, queen takes f6. And now um, the move which uh, been played very quickly by Jack was queen d1. So obviously I understand it was a home preparation. Uh, but still, I knew one thing about this line. There is no way in this line white could get uh, let's say realistically, uh, real chances to play for win because the line not supposed to be good for white. So I guess I was trying to understand uh, uh, what do I do here. Uh, many moves uh, came, I mean, cross my mind here. Obviously, I consider bishop g4 to sacrifice the second pawn maybe and try to play for pin. But every time when I was, let's say, considering bishop g4, I thought my opponent could play something like let's say, I mean, queen takes d5, and after king h8, he does this uh, really weird way by castling king side. And in fact, if I capture uh, on f3 after capture here, so it looks like uh, white absolutely fine. So I was trying to understand what's the way going to be most precise way for me to play against queen d1. Uh, since I was seeking for some subject, uh, the king on e1, the king not developed, it looks like the all pieces of white kind of getting behind. And here, one idea crossed my mind. In fact, the idea as it happening after the game was completely new. In fact, when I put this game and I run this game through my engines, most of my engines are got agree with me. The move which I made on the board uh, was the best. So I played here knight d4. So what's the idea? Idea is, first of all, obviously I'm covering this line. I'm covering, attacking my d5 pawn. Secondly, after knight d4, I'm skewing um, f2 pawn. As you see, white cannot take on d4 by knight simply because they will get mated. And thirdly, which I knew it's going to become, it's uh, after queen d4, which I knew it's the main move. I mean, it's supposed to be the main move. In fact, uh, my second thought, I uh, was considering about bishop e2 move here. Interesting, but it uh, seems to me this kind of passive. And I still believe black has a good game here. They could play uh, pretty much anything. Um, I mean, they could try to play c5 with some kind of initiative here. 
or even they can try to play actually take on only two followed by uh, followed by bishop g4 I was thinking about this possible line to play but with having king only two in the middle I had a feeling I would have compensation for sure um, I have two bishops here and uh, all my pieces very aggressive so I thought this is going to be enough uh, as I said this is wasn't like uh, truly calculation it was actually some kind of positional decision uh, based on my skills, based on my knowledge, uh, I knew uh, there is no way I would have anything here. Let's say king h8, uh, king takes e2. I mean, I could play here either bishop f5 or bishop g4, uh, followed by attacking this by these two lines. So it should be something here. I'm sure black is fine. I could even play this way, for instance, also interesting way. So it looks like uh, I have a very heavy compensation for my pawn. Uh, for sure. So I had a feeling my opponent will go for the main line and here I prepare a very nice trick uh, Queen e7 check, very unexpected and here um, I mean at the game uh, when I was playing this move, I mean when I played knight d4 I, I thought uh, why it's the only option, the, the move which happened in the game actually, it's Queen e3 but while my, my point was thinking, I found a uh, very nice, um, uh, let's say, defensive move from white side, which just seems like ridiculous, but uh, it's, it's very interesting. In fact, my opponent uh, dismissed this move just because he thought, as I said just before, he thought, oh, come on, this is, has to be ridiculous. But move is very interesting. Uh, the whole point of that interfere move it's just make sure the queen will not stand uh, in front because you see if you check the theory if you check uh, see the theory of strategy let's say the old uh, uh, positional theory by Stainis for instance who was saying uh, defense must be as cheap as possible and if you're attacking you must try to be as rich as possible it means when you attack you try to make sure your most powerful pieces involved in attack uh, at the first than your minor pieces. So with playing that e5, why trying to create some kind of mess at the black's camp, making sure the queen will not stand in front. So that e5 and the idea to play this way, queen e3. So it's kind of again hard to believe, uh, but that's what it is. So it looks like, well, definitely black has some compensation, but the line is uh, still mm, very unclear. Very unclear. And um, I, th I thought at the game that's how white should play, not e5. I still believe uh, uh, black, black is fine here. Uh, no worries, because in fact, uh, we analyzed also together move queen d5 check. Uh, interesting move, but even here, after King H8, it looks like I'm still having compensation because it's, there's still some tricks here. For instance, I can play Bishop G4, and you can't take on G4 because I have this uh, Bishop C3 check, and followed by either Rook D8 or Queen E1 mate, in case of King F1. So Black always having some tricks here. And in fact, in real game, to find uh, to found this idea, it's completely like you know, it's very hard. It's uh, pretty much all machine. Uh, but again, at the game, I saw it. I saw it, and I thought, well, if my opponent will find the ninety five followed by queen three, I will think about what do I do. I mean, besides of queen before check, I could consider to play here c six followed by let's say queen d six. Also interesting way to deal with this position. So anyway. My opponent has decided to do the move which I thought originally as the only move to play. And here I prepare queen b4 and queen b5. This is the position uh, I have reached in my calculation uh, at the time when I played knight d4. So when I reached this position I thought, well, that has to be okay to me because uh, white king still cannot castle to king side. Uh, I have two bishops. Uh, my bishop c8 could be very strong because it looks like uh, white could have some issues with light squares. And most importantly, uh, my game seems to me it's easier than to defend from white side. I have many 
concrete threats as well. As you see, so the only move for white to make knight d4, and he has prepared very strong move queen a6. Why it's very strong? The queen remains on this diagonal, cutting the king of making castle. The queen also keeping my eye on a2 pawn and let's say stopping possible ca I mean castle to queen side for the white king. Uh, black also has very annoying threat uh, c5 followed by d4. And also, in general, I need to make only one move with my bishop somewhere, let's say here or here, and to connect my rooks and threatening rook e8. So move queen a6 for some reason has been missed by my opponent. And uh, after the game, he mentioned that. He said so he considered something like queen c4, any other moves that he thought after knight d4, he's going to secure his king to castle king side. And he completely missed the uh, queen a6 move here. Um, and it looks like this is very strong. And also, uh, white has some issues. Let's say if they play queen e2 to cut the diagonal and prepare castle, then after queen g6, uh, they're still in trouble uh, since they can't really castle because I have bishop h3 move. And now I'm winning exchange by force, as you see. That was another strong part of playing queen a6 because queen a6, queen on a 6 rank has this lift jumping on g6 which will attack g2 pawn and support uh, to play rook e8 and still pin the queen. So as you see, this very tactical. I mean, playing Schlimm and Gambit will give you opportunity to always create these tactical things, tactical uh, ideas. So queen a6, my opponent played here, queen g5. Well, looks like it's only move, uh, I mean smart move, because it's uh, helping white bishop to be developed in case of rook e8 check. It's actually pinning the bishop. It's actually uh, stealing g6 square from the black queen. And it also attacked d5. So pretty much multi-optional move. And it looks like white's okay. Until, until this move. Very strong, very strong. Because not many times you can see uh, from b5 to go backward on a6 and then forward to c4. So now c4 square is the perfect for my queen because queen from e3 left and no one defending c3 pawn. So you can't really play b3 and kick my queen because c3 pawn hanging. So my queen from c4 also cutting the king so far, defended the pawn. And again, I still have a threat to, um, of playing c5. So white still has to deal with that annoying threat uh, from black side. They played here bishop e3. And now, very positional, b6. So, and if you follow my lectures, you know how I'm calling those kind of pieces. I'm calling these pieces donkeys. Because this guy on b3 has absolutely no future and he's completely restricted. If you guys uh, read classical books uh, you should be familiar with uh, uh, one of formats from uh, Zygbert Tarash who said don't ever put the knights on b3, b6, uh, g3 and g6. Uh, these are uh, one of the worst positions for knight to stay. So and this game could be one of those proofs. Uh, knight b3, b6, rook d1 in fact, uh, it's really hard uh, to suggest something uh, for white because, again, d4 is a big threat. Uh, a5, a4, it's an annoying threat. And uh, pretty much everything is uh, good for black. My opponent played here rook d1. And after bishop f5, now I have created. So first of all, I stop this queen d5 move. Secondly, bishop f5 itself is a strong move. And uh, now d4 still possible threat is going to be. And um, when my opponent played queen h5, here I got impatient. Well, first of all, it's a kind of blunder. That's the only move which makes my game not to be perfect. I knew I planned to play here rook e8, a uh, very simple move uh, which will keep all my threats and 
looks like, uh, let's say, after Rook A8, uh, White in big trouble. But I thought I'm going to simply win the game. I have some kind of um, hallucination in my, in, my, in my mind, maybe because uh, I knew I, up to this point my position is so good. And I played in mid D4. My hallucination came because I thought after CD, only what I'm doing, I'm trying to make sure that the queen and rook has no connection with D5 square. And I can play bishop G4. And made my point from it too. I completely missed my queen is blocked. And I can't, uh, I mean, the bishop is not protected. So it was uh, obviously upsetting, uh, missing this uh, obvious stuff. Some kind of blackout. But luckily, uh, I found strength and uh, I kind of calmed down. I said, okay, so what's happening is happening. So let's play from this position. Uh, what we got here, now we're down two pawns, but we're still having strong attack. And when I come down, I still found, you know what? My position is still very strong here. And I played very strong move still, uh, rook a e8. In fact, uh, white still has, uh, you know, many issues here to defend the position. And, uh, I mean... Let's say they, if they do DC, for instance, they have to deal with bishop b2. And now uh, this bishop, it's very mighty. The king is absolutely trapped, and uh, you have to deal with this check. Uh, this guy is trapped, I mean, a pinned. It's, it's still a very bad position for white to deal. My opponent has decided to play here queen e2. Pretty much, uh, I'm not saying the only option, but speaking practically, I guess the option to survive is to play queen e2 is the best, especially by knowing my opponent up to this point um, had a really low time to think. But here I prepared a very nice, uh, very nice moves. I took on e2. I made a check. And that's what I found in my calculation after my let's say, accidental, accidental blunder. I found this move, bishop h6, very strong move, bishop h6, because, so what's going on right now, if you take, let's say, if you take on g4, I'll take on e3, and I'm winning piece, simply winning a piece, because at least I can take on b3 and uh, take a piece, but I think I was going to play actually this move. And that's actually uh, a mate because, not mate, but could be mate, let's say, here. And now you have to give up on d2. Otherwise, if you do it here, then I have simply mate right here. So I found that in my calculation. And I knew my opponent must play only rook d3. That's the only move to play. And here we have c4. Very strong move c4. So I'm attacking the rook, I'm attacking the e3, and my opponent played quickly king d2, and uh, again, after the game, my opponent told me he really prayed for that move. He thought after king d2, uh, he's going to get escaped. But again, when I had my calculation after my blunder, I spent about 20, 25 minutes approximately and actually, my concentration was very good, and I saw all this part, including King D2, and I saw the uh, winning, I mean, a winning line. So, Rook takes E3, he must take, C takes B3. So, it doesn't really matter how you play it, so you must take on B3, because this is too much for you. If you play that way, I think I'm winning still by playing Rook E8. And you can't play rook e1 to defend e3 rook since uh, after ba, I'm going to promote my uh, pawn. So pretty much what has to take on b3. And here I could play again rook e8, but I thought you know, easy for me to play this way. I knew this guy is mine, so I played here bishop e6. Try to get the file. It's actually about slight technique. Bishop d5, no hurry to take the rook. As you see, rook still mine. I'm trying to improve my position first. Again, no hurry about the rook. I'm trying to still improve my position. Well, let's say hoping, maybe my opponent could play here by hoping to play rook f1, and then 
Oops, it looks too hanging. So my, my bishops are strong. So king f7, it's a kind of, again, about technique. Finally forcing to white to play g3 and to preparing f4. But now, this guy's kind of weak. Now I have a target. Takes. So as you see, my bishop now, great piece here. And uh, rook cannot go on e5 because pawn hanging on uh, f3. And after f4, now my bishop has so much space. And most importantly, I want important tempi because now I'm playing a uh, very strong move, rook c4. And finally, uh, maybe for a second I thought... Do I miss something? Is it could be drawish? But then I figured out, no, no way. So it's it's easy win. And after this, my king simply run. And my opponent resigned because it's a basically completely hopeless position for white to deal with. So again, um, as you see, this game introducing how dangerous could be Schlim and Gambit and how dangerous could be uh, when black actually having this strong initiative and uh, they could simply crush white uh, in these lines. So, as I said, if you guys are uh, playing this line, if you guys are dealing against Nazi 3, uh, my personal opinion, if we get back to this opening, uh, my personal opinion on move 5, you definitely prefer to play not f6 because d5, I've been reading uh, uh, some comments from my last game against Pedestine. Uh D5 is completely old-fashioned, and uh, my advice, I'm not suggesting you to play D5, because um, most of positions which appear after D5 line, it's better for white. But by playing net F6, uh, I guarantee you, uh, you will get very nice positions, and they are completely in balance, and they are completely playable for black. Uh, they risky. Well, playing gambit is always risky, but they fine. Trust me, they really fine. I've been trying. I've been playing this line for many years against, uh, let's say, pretty much any level, and even against uh, strong grandmasters. And so far, I'm happy with my results. I mean, obviously, I have some couple losses, but I have a lot of wins. So, in general, overall, I mean, I'm having good results in this line. So my advice to you guys, you can study this line, you can study net f6 and play and you'll be absolutely fine. Well, good luck in this line and uh, thank you for your time and we'll talk about playing Schlemann in our next lectures as well.